Hello and welcome to Cinema Explorer. I am Moksh. And I am Muskan. And today we are once again back in front of the camera, making a video, doing a review, and it feels great to be back. And even the film that we are reviewing today is a very special one. It is a sequel set 36 years after the original one. The film that we are talking about today is Top Gun Maverick, which is a sequel to the 1986 Tony Scott directed film Top Gun, which was an instant hit during that time. For a lot of people born in the 80s and 90s, it was part of their childhood, and it was part of mine as well. It was even my first Tom Cruise film, and that's where the magic began. The sequel kept on getting delayed due to the pandemic. It was supposed to be released in 2020, yeah. but now finally we are getting a big release, and it is worth the wait of so many years, I guess. It definitely was. Top Gun Maverick stars Tom Cruise, who is reprising his role as Maverick. He is back at Top Gun. after 36 years of service to the naval air force for a mission which is very challenging and the stakes could not be higher the film also stars miles teller jennifer connelly john ham and val kilmer who is reprising his role once again as iceman the film is directed by joseph kozinski who has earlier worked with tom cruise in oblivion and has worked with miles teller in only the brave the film banks on the nostalgia of the original whether it is the opening credit scene the music the shots of tom cruise riding on the bike the warmer tones or the structure itself it feels very much similar to the film and so much different at the same time i think the nostalgia element is used in a very appropriate amount yeah. it is not too much it is neither too less and that is what works so well in terms of structure there are so many similarities in this film both the films start with tom cruise pulling off one of his famous rebellious stunts which was not very well received by his seniors and then he is sent to top gun other similar elements include a budding romance a budding bromance a rivalry between two important characters a serious tone in the middle and a action packed third act it is actually very rare that we get a sequel that surpasses the quality of the original and for me this one was much better than top gun from 1986 it surpassed it on every possible level i believe every single aspect in the sequel is improved upon firstly The narrative is very compelling and it has a very strong emotional core attached to it. And this is where Miles Teller's character is very important to the story. He plays the character of Rooster, who is the son of Maverick's best friend Goose. It's not only the emotional core; even the stakes are much higher. They have a mission that is almost impossible to achieve. They are racing against time, their own bodies, the machines they are in, the enemy, the weather, everything, and that really makes it difficult for them. and all these things are tied together in a very cohesive manner which was not the case in the first film even the impact of the death of a major character of goose was much more felt in this film rather than the first film that's very much true in the first film i could not feel much about his death i could not see the characters showing those emotions of the director trying something to make sure that the audience also feel something but here i'm feeling the effect that it has on rooster as well as on maverick One thing that I really loved in this film was the callback value in multiple scenes. But that is one thing that you will have to go and watch for yourself. And another thing that I personally loved was how Miles Teller's appearance was very similar to that of Goose. So there was no Goose in the film, but I was still reminded of him through his character. I think this is the first Tom Cruise film that acknowledges the fact that he is getting old, and that is something new to see. It is indicated through various ways in the film. First of all the story itself is set 36 years after the first film. Then there are numerous dialogues throughout the film that indicate at it. Yet the one thing that hasn't changed about Maverick is his rebellious and non-conformist behavior. Another thing I really loved about this film is that it was very witty. Yeah. Which was absent in the first film. I'm so glad that the film finally got its big theatrical release. was it was an experience that was very enjoyable in the theater people were laughing along at its witty dialogues and they were having a very good time together i think this is one film that you must see on the big screen and maybe the biggest screen available to you one interesting fact confirmed by joseph kozinski as well as miles teller is that the set was no green screen area no green screen or cgi was used in the airplane scenes and i must tell you they looked absolutely gorgeous to look at The cinematography was top notch, and it was such an experience—a spectacle to look at. And hats off to the editing by Eddie Hamilton, the intercutting of the scenes, the way it all came out on screen—it was just beautiful. 
the way he's able to build up suspense and fill up the audience with exhilaration that is commendable even the sound design and editing was impeccable especially in the action scenes all the technical aspects of the film are very strong and they basically build the film for much of the movie i was waiting for the action scenes the aerial combat scenes and for the last 30 or 35 minutes i got what i wanted it was so action packed edge of your seat experience a feeling of exhilaration i think it was everything that i wanted from the film generally i am not a person who is a fan of action scenes and action films but this film really blew my mind the twists and turns towards the end the tension everything just worked so well now coming to the one aspect that was slightly underwhelming in this film and even in the first one was the romance in both the films the romance felt very out of place and unnecessary all we wanted from the film was action and that was just taking it down a little i think especially in the first part there was no chemistry between tom cruise and kelly mcgills and also they were playing a song again and again and i was not invested in their love story as much as was invested in the action scenes and the top gun scenes and here also even though the romance part is a little subtle it's a little less but still it doesn't feel like it should be here but in this film it feels a little natural along with the story the way it develops that was better than the first one which was very unnatural and unnecessary in this film maverick is romancing penny benjamin who was just mentioned once or twice in the first film but yeah one thing i have to say that jennifer connelly was a little charming in this film and that's why maybe the romance aspect worked better in this film rather than the original one but i still feel that it was a missed opportunity yeah. there was a lot of potential with this love story and how it could have been done but they didn't go for that route so i was like it didn't work for me that much and i was still much more interested in the drama and the action scenes this was the only aspect that pulls down the film a little which was otherwise really wonderful coming to the performances the film is carried by tom cruise who is the soul of the film be it the emotional scenes the action scenes or the comic timing tom cruise nailed it all miles teller is also great as rooster he perfectly shows the frustration built inside him the moral conflict that he faces and also the fact that he shares a great banter with tom cruise and the bromance that they share it's amazing to see the other characters are not given much to work with but they still do a pretty good job i think it's a tom cruise and miles teller show throughout and i would really like to see them work together again another highlight of the film was is it a spoiler it is a spoiler but it is a wonderful spoiler and it is not even that big of a spoiler so you can probably hear it It is the reunion of Iceman, Val Kilmer, and Tom Cruise as Maverick. It was actually a delight to see Val Kilmer back on screen, even though his voice was generated by AI. But still, it was so great to watch him, especially him seeing him share the space with Tom Cruise. It was just awesome. All in all, it was an amazing experience in theaters, and probably one of the best ones of this year. I think it's definitely up there with the Batman. It's a 2 hour 15 minutes action packed ride and it surpasses the first one on every level. Our rating for this sequel is 4 stars out of 5 and we cannot recommend it enough. If you haven't watched it, just go to the nearest screens as big as possible and just watch it. You will not be disappointed. Comment your thoughts on the film and the review in the comment section down below and don't forget to like and subscribe and support this channel. See you next time.